Hi, welcome to the Azure Sentinel Notebooks channel. My name is Zuli Rege, and I'm a software engineer on the security intelligence and protection team. Today, I'm going to be talking about how customers can use their Sentinel workspace to ingest large data sets and leverage ready to use BYOML notebooks to implement big data analytics, powerful statistical functionalities, and ML techniques in a simple, straightforward way. Sentinel provides the capability of integrating with and provisioning a variety of resources to make your development much easier. Using Azure ML, a cloud service to manage your ML project lifecycle, Azure Synapse, a powerful analytical service, and a variety of data connectors and log analytics export mechanisms to perform ETL operations, you can extract insights from big data and security seamlessly. Data scientists and security analysts can now take advantage of this and swim through large security data sets to perform their analysis quickly. In today's demo, I will be talking about the Azure Synapse Masquerading Process Name Anomaly Algorithm Notebook. It's a very common attack scenario. Adversaries like to take advantage of the fact that analysts may not always have the proper tools, data, or context to investigate threats thoroughly. A common technique is to slightly modify a legit process and execute a payload that way. A regularly abused process is the Windows Service Host, SVC Host or EXP. When security analysts have to dive into large corpuses of security data, these are needles in a haystack and are easy to miss when simply looked at, and so they can succeed at running malicious code on your machine. This notebook leverages Sentinel and its capabilities to apply statistics and big data technologies to enable you to sift through large data sets where the potentially malicious processes may be small in number fairly quickly and provides anomalous results along with context for further analysis. How long does it take you to find the malicious processes? The notebook primarily uses security events data with event ID is equal to 4688, which are process creation events from your Windows machine. It can be run via Azure Machine Learning Studio or directly using Azure Synapse. Details of setting up both environments and ingesting data are available inside the notebook as well as on the Microsoft Tech Community blog. To launch the notebook, simply find it in the Notebooks tab on Azure Sentinel, save it, and click Launch Notebook. Once you open the notebook, you will see details about the data sources and Python libraries being used. There are also links to more information on techniques which are used within the notebook, such as the data export mechanisms. To set up the notebook, choose either running on AML or running directly on Azure Synapse and follow the instructions. The flow is mainly to set up your Azure ML and Azure Synapse environments and attach all the necessary packages and wheel files to run Spark commands and statistical code. We have linked another notebook, which will help configure these environments easily. You will also have to create your log analytics workspace, a key vault to store all secrets, and then add that key vault as a linked service to your Azure Synapse workspace. You will also by now have a Microsoft Sentinel workspace, which will have a Windows machine data connector activated that will ingest all process creation events from your machines as explained in the data export mechanism. In this case, we have pre-run all the cells in the notebook. You will simply have to press the run button. I would advise to run the notebook cell by cell and not press the run all at the top. This way you can understand the working of each cell and what settings are being applied and when. Now we come to the algorithm and its details. In the start, we have initialized certain customizable thresholds whose descriptions are given on the side. You can change these based on the data that you are working with. To be able to find small differences between the good and the malicious processes, rather than asking the data to show two process names that are n% percent similar but not identical, we should ask it to show process names that are x deviations from the original process name. If we had asked for a percentage value to be returned, the length of the suspect string would skew our results. If we searched for deviation in longer process names, it would be difficult to find the corresponding percentage value. 
but with a count of deviations, the length of the process names would not be a problem. We will be using the Levenstein distance, which outputs the number of character substitutions, transpositions, deletions, and insertions it takes for one string to become another to generate the potentially malicious processes. This function is taken from the fast Damaru Levenstein package. There are a couple of helper functions defined here. We are adding synthetically generated known and malicious process events so that you will be able to understand the types of events that are caught by this notebook and some examples of popular processes which can potentially be masqueraded for future knowledge. Some common examples include svchost.exe, winlogon.exe, services.exe, etc. Next, we ingest the data from your workspace, select the columns we are interested in, and add the synthetically generated events to it. This is our data corpus. The logic of the algorithm is to compare frequency of different processes to categorize them and then judge their maliciousness using the library. Those processes occurring more than frequent threshold percentile of the time are considered normal, and those occurring less than infrequent threshold percentile of the time are considered potentially malicious. You can customize these thresholds based on how your data appears and your usage. These are some potentially malicious processes which were found in the data set. As you can see, svchost.exe has been masqueraded by something uh, called svcuost.exe, et cetera. At the end, we perform the comparison between these frequent and infrequent processes using the Levenstein distance and cap the threshold at a particular value to provide the most useful, potentially malicious process names. With a threshold of 0.7, you can see these three distinct processes which have been caught. These, along with their path information for context, can be exported to your log analytics workspace for further analysis. Here are 20 out of the 141 results which have been sent to Log Analytics. There are many more such notebooks and security scenarios that are described on the Microsoft Tech Community blog and can be found on our GitHub page. We hope you found this video helpful and thanks for watching.